This is the unboxing of an $80 water cooling kit off of Banggood. About $80 ship. And not a true unboxing video, I know. It, I did crack a seal and go through these once already, but take my word for it, nothing here has been swapped out. I've left all the packaging inside. Uh, would I do that to you? Just you know, go on the internet and lie to you? No, I wouldn't. CPU, GPU block. You know which one is intended for which, but a lot of little channels in there. I'm only going to be doing the CPU for this project because this is my first water cooling attempt. And all the clamps. A little bit of thermal compound in there, which I don't intend to use that. I've got some other stuff just laying around. Tubing. It's tubing. What do you want? Oh, these fans are something special now. This is the cheapest fan material I think I've ever seen. Which I guess it will work just fine, but if they're cheaping out on this part, you know, as long as it doesn't snap or you don't stick anything in there that's going to break them, it's probably going to be all right. But if they're cheaping out on this part, if they're cheaping out on the bearings, can you feel a lot of noise? Yeah, probably will be. I don't know if there's any LED or anything in here or not. There's this light pipe. Seems like there might be. I don't see anything like that. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, we got Molex connector, pass through, and we got a fan connector. Yeah, same thing here. Reservoir and a bunch of fittings. Oh. Decent enough, pretty thick. Yeah. Oh. Oh, mounts for the reservoir. And a bunch of fittings, mostly barbed fittings, and just uh, this pinch clamp. I hate these things, but a bit to it. And the lamest little funnel of them all. Pump. Now, everybody says, don't keep out on the pump. Well, I don't know. This is my first time. I don't know how well this is going to work. Maybe this pump will die and the system will completely disintegrate. But there's a pump for you. Looks like the out here. Maybe this works. In this one. And finally, the radiator. Um, I did take this out earlier today. Um, but still, because I ran some boiling water to it to clean it. But a pair of 180 millimeter fans can go in there. I am. Um, oh, those got stuck on there. Yeah, listen, thermodynamics. Run hot water through it. It gets hot. The air is hot. And then it can tracks as it cools, and then these fittings don't come off real nice. I can still get them off, but anyways, um, so I cleaned it out already. I am fairly certain this is an aluminum radiator um, uh, with a copper block. And uh, I think we got aluminum fittings as well here. Um, 
people say never, 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 ever do this. Never mix your metals. Uh, aluminum and copper are bad. I'm doing it anyway. Um, the system I'm putting it in is completely expendable, um, which is why I picked this one for my first time. Because um, if it leaks all over the place and everything disintegrates, we can just, we can throw it all out. No big deal. So, some other things that I picked up are isopropyl alcohol. Got some more fittings, which I'm not sure I sized these correctly. because I'm just going to be using distilled water in this. Um, two other fittings are a two joint and a bowl valve. Um, our XSPC 1D1 quarter inch T fitting chrome. And yes, it is chrome. I can totally confirm that. This will be the bowl valve. Also, XSPC. You ever need to valve your balls? There you go. All right, and uh, lastly, I just had some old thermal compound laying around. Um, this is oh, Comic Series Seven thermal case. I'm not even sure where, it, where I got this, but it's been around for a while. I've used it on a couple things. I think it'll be all right for CPU, GPU, and LED. Me an idea. I don't know how that made anything better, but it's for LEDs, so you know, if you got LEDs, I guess you should be doing this. So, we're going to be putting the water cooling into this thing. It's kind of been a constant in progress kind of project. I want to redo this top panel here. Uh, put, put like two layers of ply and then a layer of acrylic on top. Something like that. And I'm also redesigning it with a mechanical keyboard that I'll just inset here. That'll be something about the mouse. I'm not sure what that is. Um, oh, it's just a, basically a TV built into this. And those of you who know the old X Men cabinet, this was loosely based on those plans. We cut a whole lot of uh, material off the end of it because uh, it doesn't need to have a whole CRT display in it. We just do the flat panel. That got rid of a lot of space. And then we got kind of argued down to just four players instead of six. A little display in that, but you gotta work with other people sometimes, you know? Anyway, uh, we're gonna be making this water cooled. I got an old AMD uh, from sometime around 2011. I don't even remember what it is, uh, but it's an old processor. Uh, it's a Radeon HD 7770, which is too many sevens. I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, so it's not an impressive system, but we just use it to play name. A couple indie games off Steam, uh, play music maybe sometimes. Uh, so it doesn't need to be a real impressive system, and it's good enough. And I'm going to try water cooling it because I've never done water cooling before, and this seems like a good system to start with because I can ruin it. Today. Quick tour of the back side here. So, again, work in progress. Needs so much cable management in here. Yes, I know. Back here, um, we have a motherboard. It's just a 3D printed stain. We have video card there, CPU, some gigabyte motherboard, um, 500 watt core supply. Uh, that comes in. Uh, then over here, you got the power supply for the uh, amplifier here. That's just a car amp that goes to a couple of 
there. And yeah, it's a constant problem with dust back here as well. Um, this is out of maker space. And we have a wood shop, and there's always wood dust in the air. Just the way it is, I gotta clean this out constantly. Uh, the joystick connections, uh, I had a whole bunch of these uh, three prong connectors from another project. I got like a hundred of them for like a buck day at one point and so I had a whole bunch of extras so I just soldered them on. Uh, they're good magnetically centered joysticks uh, and halfway decent switches. Uh, they all go into uh, TZs. They're mounted on this breadboard. Um, breadboard also works just fine. I mean we're not moving it in and out. It's not um, bending the pen constantly causing any issues uh, with metal fatigue. It just sits there and it's fine and it works. And you know, redboards aren't that expensive and you can screw them in real easily with these brackets I designed. And those just act as uh, joysticks as far as USB is concerned. So you just pop out the joysticks in the windows real easy. Um, which is way better if you know the history of building your own arcades. You know, there's people who like take keyboards and Try to solder uh, wires directly to the membrane contacts, and it, this is way better. It just works. Um, so that could just comes to this USB hub down here. And so what we're going to be doing? We're going to work that CPU, and we're going to put the reservoir probably over here, and with the pump, and that should all work, I guess. So I'll pull this thing out and uh, get it set up with the water bottle. Get it out. Let's do the three ram on this. Okay, not too bad. This is a pretty good system, I and mean, even though it's seven years old, going on. Not too bad. I remember how this bracket comes off though. X pattern, you know, it doesn't really matter taking it off. But just get in the habit. This is a stock tool. I have better tools at home than other systems. Ah, there we go. to do some other experiments like lapping this and they do liquid metal. I think I'll just do one experiment at a time. I'm not gonna reuse this but alright what do we actually have here? I don't even remember. AMD Phenom 2 Many megahertz, I'm sure. The thermal paste just seems to get everywhere. Alright, so that stays in there. Some new thermal paste on there. And... Uh, which 
which one of these actually lines up? No, this one. Ten-year-old tube with thermal paste versus something that came in a water cooling kit for 80 bucks off Banggood. Tell me that. Yeah. Anyway, let's see. Yes. Take off the sticker before you apply. Totally forgot that was there. That could have been a disaster. Let's pull the plastic layer here. That will get you on tech support gore. I don't think that's a single one. I don't know if I'll go this time. 
Go ahead, Matt. Hold it in place so it can do the other thing. This is your first time doing it. Well, it's my first time doing it. Um, I watched hundreds of little videos on what I'm doing on YouTube. at the top Given the uh, people management job you already saw back there, so then we're probably not feeling anybody. Of course, totally makes sense. Yeah, they're on this side. 
So you got the water block on. And I'm going to have to figure out how to mount this inside the arcade case. Because it's not really a good way to mount it in there that it'll be nice and solid. I uh, don't make your space right now. We have a wood shop, which we you know because there's dust everywhere. Um, but I could just make some scrap wood, like make a 90 degree angle thing, and just screw it right in. Um, let's look around on Thingiverse, see if there's something I can 3D print. Mm, I'll check on Thingiverse first, but I got a feeling I'm going to be doing a wood chop project quick here. You know, I think I like this one. It's only for uh, 120, but I think we could build two of them together. And it's just going to sit, like, mm, probably on the bottom, just have the fans pulling air up. Uh, just, you know, thermodynamics, hot air rises, you get a little extra out of it. They're already static pressure fans, uh, so uh, this should work. Um, it'll take a while to run this off in the 3D printer, but um, we have a pretty big printer here, so... I think I can run two of these at the same time. It'll take a number of hours, uh, but it should work. I like this design. Solid. It cannot possibly leak in any way ever. in frame. Because life is a journey. And I'm putting my journey on YouTube. Because I'm just that self-important. And right now, my journey depends on making this nut thread. Go on like that, and then I can put a screw to here, and that can go right into the wood. That should work just fine. between here but no cutout for it. Yeah. You didn't see that, could you? Camera framing, how does it work? Um I don't know what to do with this. I don't think it's really necessary. So I won't. 
might add a little extra noise, but... I think that could maybe work if you're mounting this somewhere other than on top of the radiator. It might be okay. Go like you have to go like that because water has to go this way. So the water has to go down there. You don't want to run it dry. And if you did it this way, you wouldn't be able to pull it up there. So yeah, this has to go on the bottom. And let's pull it from this side. That works. Put this other bracket on. That'll do. Put some thread lock on there, but so uh, that's ready to mount in that direction. I'll probably have this. Maybe that's what the pad's for. And rest it. And then let's pour it in a pinch back here. I can rest this on the ground. Okay. And then um, we put like this, and we can use this pad to make sure this cord doesn't get pinched. And we can still mount it. Let's this out a little. Okay. This, that'll set on the floor of it. And then these will attach the side. We'll just screw through here. Get some of these other fittings on. And this one goes up here. motherboard two fittings in there that will do so it's gonna be about two hours before 3d print finishes Measuring out where everything's going to be. So I can mount this and I can mount the motherboard and start adding everything to the fittings here. Let's do that. Alright, next thing I want to do actually is make this ball fitting because this will be where we drain it. So we got this T-joint, the ball fitting, and go on like that, sort of. And that will be our drain point. So we want this to be the lowest part of the system, uh, which will probably be this bit here. Is having the drain after the pump the best idea? But it's a terrible idea. I'm gonna do it anyway. So we got two extra fittings here that were meant for the GPU. We need for the GPU. So um, I'm going to put that on. Oh, that's still not enough fittings. Put this on like that. And this like that. And now we are out. Uh, we need two more here, and I'm not 100% sure these extra fittings can be made to stretch for the piping I've got. Let's find out. Okay, they, they ziplocked this part, but then it's sealed down here. 
Lord forbid your water-cooled fitting gets humidity around it. All right, um, so will this even fit? No, that is not fitting. Um, these are 3 eighths diameter. If I have just some plastic tubing, of any kind uh, from the hardware store. Uh, no, if I take that up, maybe it'll get on there anyway. Two for there. Yeah, I got two extras. So yeah, they, um, Banggood does send you two extra clamps, which in this case is good. I actually need them. Cool. Uh, so how do we do this? trick I learned working on a kegerator is to heat it up. You will get hot on all sides. Oh yeah. Except I'm gonna clamp on first. I'm gonna forget that all day. Be, oh, I got that on there. Oh, it needed a clamp. Keep these things. Okay, so this is probably not ideal. But I can get it all the way down. And clamp it. Or I can't clamp it. You know what else can clamp it? A zip tie. You ever start to make your space? Well, the first things you need is a drawer full of zip ties. Full drawer full of them. Now let's heat this up again, then I can get this clamp back off. But actually, I need two more for the radiator, so I think they did send exactly as many as I need. Or I can just zip tie a few more. Not a big deal. Those clamps are really annoying to work with. Anyway! We got that on there, and that, and then that's our drain. Okay. And I'll cut off about a foot here. I have no idea what I'm doing. In case you can't tell. Alright, let me get fittings on here. Normally, water won't be coming through these. Closed position.
this can be real short. Too warm, can't get it on there. There, okay. All the way down. Perfect. I feel like I'm getting away with something. Putting these too large. I think it's going to hurt anything. If anything, it'll help it contract around the fitting. Make it that much more sealed. Oh, it's hot. Amazing. I blow hot air on it and then complain about it being hot. That's the way we do around here. Thing. Now we'll get this mounted up. Uh, no, we won't. We'll do the fitting from here to here. Then we'll get this mounted up. Uh, then we'll need, after that, that's when we start needing to measure everything out. Yep. Let's do that. So I need a little bit. I've got a strong feeling that this is not enough tubing now that I've cut all this off. Hmm. Can go to the hardware store and get some more tubing. But stuff they might have there might kink up much more easily, so I'll have to be careful about how it's routed. These fittings should have the clamps, actually. Back up here. All right, so obviously these fittings are meant for this size pipe. Again, I forgot to put the clamp on before I started heating it up, which would make this job easier.
needle mode suppliers is one of those tools that is the wrong tool for every job. Which is also true about vice grips. Vice grips are the wrong tool for every job. And yet, they are handy things. Alright. Bring that a little forward. Now we can do what I've been saying, which is mount this up and hopefully have enough tubing left over to get from here to the CPU block, to the radiator, and then up here. All right. So, I'd like to put the radiator right here, but that means having a lot of tubing come from over there. I don't know if I have enough. So, let's see, if I put radiator here, I have one long tube coming over there because the Actual tube will need to end somewhere about here. And there. I'll go in there, and then that'll go out to the radiator, and the radiator can be right behind this power supply here, right over here. So that tube's not too long, and then the outlet on that can come right back here, which will actually be the inlet because the water will flow from the radiator, the pump right here over the radiator, and then that should still be the lowest part of the system because the radiator will be on risers a fair bit, which means that'll be easy to drain from right there. And the top of the radiator actually, I think, will be the highest part of the system. I think that'll work. Yes, I believe. So, uh, I think we have a plan. And we might need to get some more tubing, um, but even if I had to use hardware store stuff, I can, I'll be careful about routing it, not do any hard bends, and I think that'll be okay, uh, it'll keep any kinks out of it. So, okay. Alright. Went through our box of old screws, we're only flying some flat heads. Or the right size to not go through this wood here. Uh, but let's try this anyway. What I like about solid state drives. Who cares if you have a big magnet around them? Oh, that was better than I thought. Alright, next one on. Test fit that. Yep, it's already getting wood dust. Such is the way of things around here. I'm going to drill two more. Okay. Wait, how do I unscrew it in? Take these off? That's annoying. I think that's how I have to go. Yeah. 
cheating. Okay. Put some tape around here. It would be pretty, but I don't like the way it comes off too easily. And we have a tendency to move this around a lot um, to take it to shows and things like that. Um, and I want to keep being able to do that. So I like to have everything tied down a bit. Even though the cables are all over the place, those don't really come loose or anything while transporting. And even if they do, we just pull them back in. Um, this, I don't want this bouncing around in here. Um, so I might just put tape. Any midwife. What a bad joke. Should I not make those jokes? Yeah. Anyway. Try to do everything in frame. This is easy to forget, especially when you're starting out. Hey, did you know what I forgot? A clamp. Clamps will be the devil. Put the clamp on there already, because I remember things like that. I'm smart. I ain't like dumb. I'm smart. Fine. So this is as far as I can go for a radiator setup. I guess like a rough measure. So I mean it's gonna be roughly there and there. And then this end. That's a thing I can do. What was connectors as a design? Striking at something that are plugged in once, and then you leave it alone forever. And that one is just getting pushed in. Why? Ah, okay. So, 
Pre-fit clamps. So that way I remember to do that. This is as far as I can take it for now. I gotta wait for a 3D print to finish. And then we can get the radio mounted. And then we can uh, be able to do them. Alright, these are all done. And I think they look good. We can make use of these. Here we go. We have a radiator with the fan is all lid now. And 3D printed these off. And will these fit the way I want them to? No, they will not. Oh, they have to go. Okay, they go that way. Okay. So that fits there. And if we do two of them, we can do that. We can make this work. Oh, yes. Yes, we can. All right. So, I'll uh, get, gotta get these mounted in the block, uh, the, the arcade, then these mount to this, and it should work, and then we can start going. Alright, so I found some screws for the radiator, and they all seem to thread, and just enough to hold everything down nice. So, now I need to drill holes down into it. To mount it right over here. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to mount it. Uh, I'm going to run the lines, and then I think I'm going to leave it there for today. So I don't have enough time to fill this and uh, do a half decent leak test. Uh, so I'm going to leave it like this and uh, just get the fittings attached. I've done the easy side first. Maybe not the right choice. in there. Of course, if you have a makerspace long enough, you will have a big box of screws. Just how it works. That's not going anywhere. So we're going to go from here to over here. So what about that much?
lighting situation a little bit better. There, there. same size as those extra ones I bought down here. So that actually works. Alright. That's a complete loop. So we got pump going out here. Ball bell, two joint. And it goes this way into the CPU and then back out. And if you tell me that loop order matters, you're wrong. Alright, um, this is going to be the end of work for today. I don't have enough time to fill this at the moment. So, we will come back for this. Back for day two, and we're going to start filling. Now, um, their little funnel is totally useless on this. But we've got a bigger funnel, and I can use their funnel to funnel my funnel. That isn't a meme at all. Never mind. Uh, I'm also going to use this to fill it because I think it's on a gallon is a little difficult and I want to measure out how much PT I need to put in here. This is about 550-ish milliliters. Uh, so I fill this, put it in, and then I'll know how many drops of PT or I should use one of these. So. I just saw this insane long funnel music. from a little bottle like this. Be a little... So the problem with using a big funnel is not realizing how much volume it can take. Alright, we'll clean that up. Right, we got ourselves about 500 milliliters, 550-ish milliliters of the water there. So I was wrong, this is closer to 600 milliliters. But, fill up just a little bit on the top. Maybe this will work. No, I'm not gonna try. I'm gonna fill a little bit on the top. That's this. This little funnel is I'm going to get it about halfway. I'm doing this real slow because I just don't want to overflow like I did just a few minutes ago. This way, we don't start the pump dry. Now, I have a trick for this. Uh, when I put the power supply all plugged back in here, I'm going to jump the wires on the power supply connector back. So, if you don't know the trick to this, you jump the green wire to, I think it's one of the red ones. Positive voltage going through there. Um, it could be ground. I've never had anything blow up by getting the wrong one. It just doesn't work. So I can guarantee it. 
for Your funnel is perfectly fine. Better than my dumb idea. You win this time, China. to open this up. Okay, so this is full of water now. Close it off again. Safely do that. Okay. Now this, that means this part is not supposed to have an air bubble in it. So that means this part is primed uh, for whenever we need to drain the whole loop. Come through there. Something wrong with this power supply? Something's shorted out. I'm going to disconnect the pump. Okay. Nope, nope, that still does the same thing. That's not good. I'm struggling to get this air bubble out of the CPU area. Have it have that little bit more. This will eventually work. this other power supply that's for the amplifier in this setup. I've got it jiggered already so that everything needs to be turned on directly. Just make sure. There we go. some of the bubbles.
So, I think we have ourselves a little cooling loop. I took care of this leak, I think, by tightening that a little bit. I'm gonna put some zip ties around here. Add some PT nuke. Looks like we got less than half a liter in there. Which I bought two gallons of distilled water, which I knew was gonna be overkill, and it's like way overkill. That's okay. You can always find other uses for distilled water. I can't get over how cheap these fans are though. I mean, it, Chinese engineering, it goes rocketry, the Great Wall of China, and these fans. All right, zip tying this thing. I got black zip ties because those make your temperature go down like an extra five degrees. I mean, why wouldn't it? Huh? Tell me that. That should be more secure than we had it. here and not the tool that was right. Alright. PT nuke. Alright, so this is one drop per liter. We have half a liter, so we're just gonna put a drop in. Okay. There's a drop, and that'll just mix in naturally from the pump action. So pump is a little bit of an annoying work. I think the way this arcade is built with these thick wood panels, it's like half inch uh, plywood. Um, I think we'll be okay on noise. Um, this was not done to reduce noise. In fact, the way this was set up before was very, very quiet. You, you couldn't even know if it was on because of these wood panels. Um, but keep it fairly quiet. At an older setup, um, I had just slapped a case inside here, and that case was definitely not set up to be quiet at all. And that one you could notice when it came up. This one, it's almost so quiet before that you wondered if it was even doing anything, which is almost too quiet. up, everything's plugged in, power supply power is on, and there we go. As you can see it's loading here. I still need to do the alarm in the BIOS though, that tells it that the CPU fan speed is no big deal. Oh, maybe it's just going to go. Okay. It boots. Let's, did I put CPU Z on here? Yeah. We want to do X4 840. 2.2 gigahertz. 8 gigs of RAM. Like I said, not a bad system for 2011 stuff. Okay, so at idle. Seventeen C. Six Celsius. That almost seems too cold. Although the water I put in was out in my car for a while, so it's probably pretty chilly. It'll start coming up. Um, I'm gonna let this sit and let the system soak some heat for mm, about an hour or so, just at idle, um, and then I'll run Prime ninety five. This is looking good. As long as it's not overheating, that means the loop is probably all good. Or at least a baseline working. And we'll come back and check these temperatures a little bit. Actually, let's the uh, 
temperature inside here. Yeah. Uh, the bottom one is inside here. 67 is outside uh, the shop. Where is it? There's... No, no. 67 is in here. 64 is out in the dirty area of the shop out there. Um, so it is currently 64 in here. So this isn't even up to ambient yet because, you know, that water was in my car. It's a cool day. So we're just going to wait for that to soak. So while we're waiting, while we're waiting for the temperature to soak up into these, I need to get this water that already leaked out that hopefully I fixed. It doesn't look like we're getting any leaks so far, but only had it running for a few minutes. So we're going to put paper towels around each area. even to a napkin. Okay. Uh, I think we are covering all the fittings that need to be covered. Uh, so now we just wait. Uh, running about an hour now. Uh, it's 128. It started at 135 with Prime 95. CPU is at 100% and not going over 33... We got up to 36 at one point, uh, but looking pretty good. And uh, there's no leaks in back either after an hour, so we'll let that run too, but still looking pretty good. So if you enjoy this video, please subscribe to this channel. It really helps me out. And if you really like it, maybe you check out my book on LeanPub, uh, Programming the Raspberry Pi with Perl. goes into a lot of projects and everything you need to know about how to do that. So thanks for watching.